Now, as I mentioned before, a data warehouse is really good for storing your unstructured data and having it prepared for sort of really quick processing of analytical queries. But there are some challenges that typically happen with your typical data warehouse platforms. One, they're not cheap. So the more data you put in there, the more queries you're running there, the bigger the bill gets, and that can sometimes be prohibitive. So you need to kind of find other places to do things. But also you have this big plethora of unstructured data that you need to also have somewhere to store. So typically the, the other piece of the platform is what's referred to as a data lake. And a data lake is essentially just a dumping ground for data. It's essentially just a storage layer. So literally anywhere that you can store files is something that can be a data lake. It's just file storage, uh, usually some sort of distributed file storage. So typically in this case, now the world for a data engineer looks a little bit different. So basically, again, we're going to ETL that data from the data sources, but instead of ETLing it directly into the data warehouse, because again, some of that data might be unstructured, some of that data we may not want in the data warehouse, or we may want to stop here first. So we generally land everything in the data lake into different types of files whether this is object storage like an Amazon S3 or on-prem distributed storage like a Apache Hadoop. But whatever that storage layer is, wherever we're storing that data, okay, we then take the data from that data lake and then we're going to ETL it again into the data warehousing platform. Because typically traditional data lakes aren't going to be a place where you're going to be able to do really intensive analytics as far as being able to do it fast enough um, as fast as a data warehouse and also have the flexibility of a data warehouse and the ability to do like up, say, up, updates, inserts, deletes that have sort of the same kind of guarantees that a database and data warehouse gives you. Now, data lakes are much cheaper. It's generally much cheaper to store data in a data lake. You are able to run some analytical queries because there are tools that are built for running queries on data in a data lake. Um, and again, that's also going to be generally a lot cheaper way to run queries. But again, just a pure data lake isn't going to necessarily have everything you need to make that practical to do more and more there. So you can generally run some ad hoc queries on the lake with tools like Dremio, Trino, Presto uh, that allow you to run queries on data in a data lake. But again, these are in a pure data lake. This is typically like a read only type situation. So you have the data in the data lake, you're running queries on it uh, to do some ad hoc work. So you're just trying to discover some random stuff. It's not high priority stuff. You identify the high priority stuff and then you move that into a data warehouse. So again, very read only. Now, the thing is that how do you run SQL on a bunch of files? Well, that's one of the things that a tool by the name of Apache Hive kind of figured out a while back. So basically what it did is that it said, hey, if you put a bunch of files in a folder, that folder will be treated as a table, like a traditional database table that you can run SQL queries against. So you could use the structured query language, SQL, um, or SQL, and you can use that language to write questions and get answers to your data that's in your data lake. Um, there are some limitations with Hive because of the because of identifying tables as a folder of files, this created certain performance issues because it has to then go figure out, hey, what files are in that folder, which can be some expensive operations for certain storage systems. Um, along with some other bottlenecks that would slow things down, make things more difficult, things less flexible. Um, so this is why, again, generally, traditionally, the data lake wasn't where you did bulk of your analytics work. The data warehouse was still your sort of data analytics house. Okay, so you still have to move data into the data warehouse, again, where it can get pretty expensive because you're paying for that storage, you're paying for that computer at a much higher price level, uh, typically. So there's got to be a solution, and there is, and we'll talk about it real soon. I'll see you in the next one.